G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now I've been very busy this week painting, painting, puttying, sanding and more painting. And as you can see, it's all starting to come together. This is the colour scheme I'm going with. It's the two colour camo, which is the Coastal Command one. And it's taken a lot of work to get things smooth and get things together. But all of that's to come. And I've still got some of my uh, tape on there for the portholes. So that was my trick. Instead of having to individually mask all the porthole windows, I've just covered them up with these little things. Because I'd already painted the sides of the Sunderland. And that was the method to my madness. And I thought, you're crazy. Why are you painting it before you put it together? The idea was paint the sides so that the porthole windows could just be basically masked up in one hit. And then when you peel off the masking tape, they're revealed to be perfect. It was so easy. Well, that was easy. The sanding, the scraping, and well, look, I've got a lot to show you. So, does that sound interesting? I hope so. Let's roll the music. Well, the moment has finally arrived. After all the messing about with uh, fiddly little interiors and all the things that go on with them and all the rest of the stuff, the windows are in. They're all glued in nice and solid now. They're not coming out. <laughs> it is time to put this all together, clamp it up, rubber band it up, and then I can get on with the exterior of the aircraft. All right, here we go. Well, I've left the fuselage to set overnight. And while I was uh, waiting for that, I got into a whole lot of painting. So I've, I've done a few things. I've um, made up the struts and I dry fit them. I glue them into the floaty bit, right? And then I dry fit those struts to the wings so I could get the correct shape and angle and I propped them up on my desk. So they should line up pretty spot on. And when they're glued in, they will be the correct angle. And they've got to lean back just that little bit from the wing and that should be correct. They should be spot on. So they are good to go. I've also been busy cutting every single part that I need off the sprue and giving everything a primer coat. So I've put things in a colour that's um, relative, right? White things are white and grey things can be all kinds of colours. I've made up the trolleys for, um, you know, when it's basically beached just for the moment so that I've got something to put it on while it's sitting on my bench and you know I'm fiddling around with things but eventually they will get 86 well that means removed from stage <laughs> it's an old theater term so they will get 86 once I don't need them and there will be a Ciorama sort of base of the uh, Sunderland just coming in for splashdown that is my aim I think that'll be a fun thing to do now the cows oh, I've been in so many minds about this I, I did make up some and I primed them you know half grey on the top and white underneath thinking I was going to do that but there's a version where the cows are all white are all white even the copper bit here right it's white and I thought gee that's going to save a lot of mucking around and painting being the lazy old sod that I am I'm probably going to go with that the fully white ones more about that later because it's going to be an Australian version all right what we really want to have a look at here is how did the gluing together go so let's see what we got here see these are little standy wheels i've just got those stuck on there to hold it in place and i had a bit of fun 
just dry fitting in the um, the radar and um, a snorkel here. Yeah, yeah, that's when it's really underwater. Yeah, no, it's not. I don't know what it is actually. Somebody told me. Bum 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 bum. Okay, so moment of truth. Release the clamps. It's a bit like release the kraken, but it's release the clamps. All right, not falling apart. That's a uh, that's a good sign. These are supposed to. There we go. They do release. So that's looking quite good. My little peg on there. Make sure that's um, coming together rather nicely. So, took a bunch of cells. Oh, I did uh, put a few little glass bits on just to make sure everything was spaced correctly. This is the thing when you're putting bits together and you're gluing them, especially like with ships, it's often good to put dry fit the deck or something or put a part in that you know is going to push it back out again. Because there's no point you gluing the thing up really hard and then you go to put this part in later and it's never going to fit. So I use this trick where I've got it sort of all set up and glued and clamped. And then I just pop in a few of the parts that may cause some spacing issues later. And this way I know everything's going to fit. So how did our interior fare? I haven't got the, um, the pilots in there. The blobby pilots are not in there. So it looks like my interior survived. It's all still there. That's a good thing. That is a good thing. And how do we go gluing down there? Pretty good. It's not too bad at all. I'm hoping this doesn't need a lot of filler because that's the whole reason of painting it, you know, pre-painting all the parts. And, you know, my logic was that I've got camo that goes over here, so it didn't really matter that I'll be doing the puttying up there as long as I've got everything else fitting well. So, look, I think this is... Um, I think we've had some success. Tangle it up here. Always the exciting part. I'm moving all of this. Now underneath that, I've noticed I need to add some more paint. I don't know what's going on here. So I actually put a bit of putty on while I was waiting for dry. But I'm going to need to do a little bit of filler. Not much, tiny bit of putty. It really, you know, it won't ever be seen down there, but might as well do a, a proper job. But it fit together fairly well. I mean, you could probably paint that, just get away with it. But I'll run a little bit of filler in there and I'll give it a splash of paint. Because at the moment we're still in the white stage. Now, you're worried, oh, but you're gonna get all your windows and everything and you didn't want to mask your windows, Harry. Well, no, I'm gonna cut a little ovoid shaped piece of masking tape and put it over there because these sides are fine. They don't need paint. So I'll just be like touching up areas here. So it's just a little bit of overspray that I'm gonna to have to protect from. And my final camo scheme, it will actually start above the windows. That's the one I've picked. It actually sits above all there. So it's, uh, again, don't have to mask no pesky round windows. That was the whole idea. That was it. The lazy modeler. How do I choose my camo scheme? The one where I do the least amount of stuff. So, I'm going to need a little bit of white here. I'm going to need to touch up here. Going to need a little... So there's a bit of fettling to do, as to be expected. But all of this can be touched up quite easily. And I don't expect my windows are going to get, or my portholes, are going to get any paint. Slowly getting edges and things sorted out here. Now, this seam here actually wasn't bad. And I've used an old trick where you just simply run your knife along so you don't destroy any detail. And lo and behold, there's plastic up to plastic. It's a perfect fit. So um, nothing wrong with that. Everything seems to actually join very nicely. Now here, of course, everything's falling away, so you haven't got much chance of wrecking roots. But then you get into areas like here, which is a bit flatter, where well, you can still do the trick. You simply use only the edge of the knife, and you go in and you only scrape where the join is. And you have a look. Does it need filler? No, it doesn't. Remember, I did a lot of pre-work on this, shaping and testing and dry fitting. And even here you'll see, you can see there's a tiny bit of filler I put in there when it was actually, the paint was just touched dry. I couldn't help myself. Now, one spot that was a bit of worry, the joint here was not very good. This side, the port side of the tail fin mounting, it stuck out. So what I did to fix this problem is Again, the knife, I just got the knife in and worked away 
Is it stuck at about probably about half a millimetre? And scrape and scrape and scrape until it was not too bad, and then very gently finish it off with a bit of fine sandpaper, and that's going to stop wrecking anything. Similarly here along this edge, which I was very worried about, again scraping the paint off and the glue and having a look at the joint and amazingly it's all glued together. Right? So you know you could get in there and be hitting that with sandpaper and thinking you've got to fill it. Check it first. Have a look. Just scrape your paint off without wrecking the, uh, the detail and see what your joint's like. If it's like mine, you're realising that's not too bad. That's only going to need a very light sand, which hopefully won't use the edge of the sandpaper. I won't wreck the rivets. There we go. That's ready for painting. With all that scraping and sanding out the way, it's a good time to clear your hobby bench, wipe everything down before you get to the masking. Otherwise, there's all kinds of gunk and stuff here that's going to get in the way. So... Spring clean time. Look at the workbench. Nice and clean now. Yes, that's what we wanted. Okay, time to start doing some masking. Now, this is the camo scheme that I'm going with because I'm doing the RAAF version. Okay, and if you have a look, there is a bit of white here on the leading edge of the wings. All right, so we're going to leave, we're going to have to do that also down here on the tail. So, my um, primed wings. Going to need this little area here white. So, how do we mask that out? How do we get that? And how do we make these little curves? They're not that hard, really. Not that hard at all. All right. First off, if you're doing this one, the um, the edge line comes just inside these little panels here, right? So there's little panel lines, and they're pretty easy to find on here. So there are the panel lines. All right. So you know it must on there. There's another little big high ridge there. That's not it. It's just in front. So it's just there where all those orientations are, which is fairly easy to find. So let's mask that up quickly. Now here it's supposed to curve. And although most people get bendy tape to do this, you can, if you're tricky, actually get your masking tape to curve. So all this stuff pretty well bends. So just keep your attention. This bit here, of course, I made sure that's nice and straight. Now, pay special attention to getting into little grooves like that. This is the whole reason I've stopped the tape there. I'm not going all the way across because if I did that, there's no way I could twist it and turn it over everything. So I'm stopping the tape there, pushing that in with a nail. All right, let me get the rest of this done. It could, of course, go with the usual sort of camo scheme that most people do, which covers the whole thing there. And that's, you know, that's great. And you probably still get away with it. You're going to have to mask around a few little portholes there. And, and that's a good one. But I rather like the minimalism on this. And I've seen a few photos of the craft in the aircraft in the, that livery. And I really like it. So we've got the main lines done. But how do we get those curves? How do we work those out? It's really easy. In fact, your model will help you. So, we get a little bit of tape. Okay, and we know, if you have a look, it joins at the join of the nacelle. Where the nacelle joins the wing, joins there and there. And it just so happens that the point that I picked it joins there and there. So, get it straighter. On the right angle there, Harry. Okay, so there you go. Pretty well joins there and there. Right, so that's damn close to what we need. But how are we going to get this curvy shape here? Well, actually, it's really easy. This is such a simple trick. Okay, now you get your set square out, you try and work it out. The idea is so that on side on, 
you don't see any camo. But when you look this way, they have camo, all right? So to achieve that, what we do is this. You gotta work out where it goes to, and if you have a look on this diagram, it just points over the edge of the wing, right? So where the wing edge is, just over that. So we'll mark a point there. So that's where it's got to go to. Now, if I lift this up, you notice what's happening? All right, we'll do it again. Flat, and if I lift it up, I get a little parabola. All right, so if I make sure that that's only lifted to the point that I want, okay, there is a perfect parabola on there, which is shaped exactly as I want. As I said, your model does it for you. This is, you know, so getting in there with your soft, don't use a hard pen for this pencil. This is like a 4H or 5B, 5B, sorry, 5B, very black. Okay, so working from what the inside is that you've got to keep, just sort of keep marking it until you get the line. All right, flip that off. We have got the exact curve that we need. Now it's a matter of just having a bit of a steady hand and a good eye. I'm working from the outside of your markings. Try and cut that parabola. So there we have it, there's our shape. And again, working out, there's basically where the wing edge would line up. Go forward a little bit from that. Put the tip there. And all things being equal, that'll fit in there perfectly. Rebel shape, exactly what we needed. Okay, that's going to look spot on. Well, it's been a few days later, and I'll explain why in a sec, but I have unmasked. All my masking here work perfectly. Those shapes are correct. Nice, crisp curve. Everything worked really well. I'm so happy. That worked out well. And again, I've got some effects happening. So all that's good. The wing's good. Very happy with all the grey. Very happy with how all that turned out. But here's why it took three days to get here. These seams here and this fit here for the tailplane here, the rudder, right? The fin. Yeah, they're not good. They're not good at all. And white is a bugger of a colour to work with because you, uh, you think everything's good. You sand it up. You put the white on and then... Oh no, you notice the joint is just terrible. There's bridges and everything. So I've ended up actually destroying some of the detail because I ended up putting a lot of putty in there to try and get that edge to join up. It's not too bad now. And a lot of putty in there. So that got puttied and sanded and painted three or four times. Bit of a bother. Same along here. Although I thought I had a fairly good um, edge here and I thought the mating was quite nice. Again, once I got the white paint on, everything showed up. So that also got a lot of putty, sand, paint, putty, sand, paint, and I think I'm just about there now. Now because of all my sanding and my scraping, I have lost any kind of rivet detail along the top here. So rather than that stick out and look horrible, I'm going to faintly scribe some lines which matches up with the rivets. And then hopefully once it's all painted, it all come out in the wash. Now, what the trick here is, is to match up. I've got my lines and I also want to match up to the marks. The marks are there because white is so hard to see. You know, everything just ends up being a sea of white. Um, this way I can got an idea where these panel lines are supposed to be. Match up to the rivets. So there we go. Okay. And also marking either end of them, that lets me know where to start and where to stop. So that should be correct there. Yeah. So here I only need to go from there, very gently, to there. And that's it. That's just a very simple little panel line there. And then when I paint it all up, there'll at least be some lines and break up here, which should hide any lumps and bumps in the putty, and should give a bit more detail and interest to the top here. Now it looks a big mess, but don't worry about that because 
It's a 4B pencil, so it easily removes. And anyhow, remember we're painting grey over this. So we'll just... All that's left now are my panel lines, see? They're very faint, but they will do the job. All my panel lines have been put in. I've matched them as best as I can. And um, they do show up rather nicely. And what I've done here is at the end, I used a 16 millimeter shape on my circle cutter to create a cutout so I could get that circle. So we're all ready for the paint booth. <laughs> Let's see if it works. Out of the spray booth and that's how she looks. What do you think? That's come up a treat. And there really wasn't much bleed at all. There was a couple of tiny little edges that I could just get in with a fine brush and touch a bit of white, touch a bit of grey. But 99.999% of it was good. Finally, I had a win after a whole week of sanding, scraping, puttying. Oh, so, so much work. It's a very big bird. Oh, I've still got these little guys to peel off. So let's do that. And I'll show you basically what happens here. The, um, the porthole windows, obviously I wasn't spray painting the sides, not at all. Look at that. Perfect, because they only had the tiniest bit of overspray. So my whole method of um, covering those up easily. Yeah, see, there's no demarcation lines or anything, because the painting was done on the top and on the bottom and the edges. But look, she's looking good. What I think I should do now is try to put the whole thing together so we can have a look at this big bird. There we go. It's uh, mostly a dry fit. She's just all popped together and propped up on a few little spools of tape there um, so she won't fall over. What do you think? What do you think? I, I think we've done it. That's a Sunderland. It's really looking the part. Especially after all the problems I had this week and three days of sanding and painting. Couldn't believe it. But it's, it's a lot of paint. It's a very big bird. Okay, well that is it. She is finished to that stage. I've got to show you how I'm doing the special effects here on the wings. That's next time. I haven't got to the barrels. That's next time. I've got um, aftermarket props to do. That's next. Oh, look, there's so much more we're still going to add to it. There's bombs to go underneath. There's lots of fine details still to add. But the basic bird is born. Yeah, you like that? I do. I'm so happy. I, yes, I know this little antenna. For some reason, I painted that one white when I painted things up. Never mind. I'll fix all that next time and show you a whole lot more. But for now, look, hit those buttons, please. Please. It really helps the channel. You know, like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. You know, it really does help the algorithm and it gets these videos watched. And you can always join my Patreons or my YouTube members or buy me a curry. That really helps this channel out. But for now, that's everything I've got to say. So we'll just soak up this little dry fit of the Sunderland, right? You see the little blobby pilots in there? You haven't painted those yet. That's something else that's got to be done. Oh, look, there's so many little things left to finish on this. But look, overall, she's starting to look like a Sunderland. And I am happy with that. Okay, it's goodbye from Australia. And it's hooroo from Harry Udini. <laughs>